Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Today we're going to talk about binding your quilt, start to finish, even ending it. So what you're going to do when you get your quilt all quilted like this, I mean it's completely done and quilted, it's time to bind it. Now this quilt that I'm working with is from the Disappearing Nine Patch window pane tutorial and if you want to see how that's done you can click the link below. But this one, um, uh, this one we're just going to show how to bind it. You can see I have the raw edge here. I've trimmed my quilt so I'm ready to bind it. And how I do that is I take some fabrics and I audition them. So I slide a fabric in under the edge here. You can see over here. I'll move this over here so that we can see it from the top camera. And you can see how the different fabrics are going to look on this edge. And sometimes you just want to go with the same fabric because you just want it to blend and go. And sometimes you want a little bit of contrast. But today we're going to go with the dark green. I've used that. Um, I've used that inside on this on the window painting part and we're going to go with the dark green and it's really going to frame it up. I think it's you're going to see it's it's really going to just frame that up and just give it a great look. So when you start cutting your binding one of the things to remember is that your fabric and this is for a straight binding we're not talking bias at all we're just talking straight binding that your fabric is is about 40 inches wide. So this quilt is only about 37, so I'm just going to need four strips to bind this because I know I'll have enough. So I'm going to lay this on here, like on my, on my mat, and I'm going to cut my binding strips at two and a half inches. So I have some here that are already cut, and once I get my strips cut, what I do is I head over to the iron and I iron them in half, and I iron them before I sew them. And the reason I do that is because when, um, when you're dealing with uh, fabrics that are solids, it's hard to tell the front from the back. And sometimes when I sew them together, I have a seam going this way and a seam going this way, and it, and it just gets crazy. So this eliminates that problem because every time I put them together, you know, I put them together so that they just work and I know that my seams are going to be going the right direction. It just saves me some picking time. So now you can see that I've, I've ironed this in half right here. Let me see if I can get this, get this open here. So I've just ironed it in half. My strips again are two and a half inches. And then I head over to the sewing machine and I sew them together. Now when I lay them together, I want to show you right here, I'm going to put, I can see here, I've, I've ironed it this way so I know that the outside of my iron line is the top side of my fabric. And I'm going to put them together um, just like making a little plus sign like this. And I'm going to sew diagonally from this line to this line. I'm not going to draw it. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to set my presser foot right here and I'm going to sew across to here because that will give me, um, it's sewing it together on a, um, on a bias line will give me much less bulk in my binding. If you straight sew your pieces together like this, you have this fat little seam line that just pokes out. So what we want to do is we want to put them together like a plus sign and we're going to sew them diagonally from corner to corner. So let's head to the sewing machine. Now I have some here that I've already sewn them together. You can see them, you can see them hanging off the back of here. And that's kind of how I do it. I put my first one in and I I just lay it across the top of my sewing machine and I'm using white thread so you can see it but normally I would use a little bit darker thread especially on a darker fabric. So then I'm just going to go straight across here and you can see it right there you know I just went I just went corner to corner and if I were to add another strip on this rather than cutting it I would just take my strip and again just open it up and lay it on here and make my plus sign and sew it again. But I have sewn these together and so what I'm going to do now is we're going to trim these apart. So I just take my scissors and just cut the little pieces like this. And some people save those tiny pieces. <laughs> I don't, I don't save them anymore. I have loads of those tiny pieces. All right, so this is my last little one I'm cutting right here. And then you can see when, when I uh, open this up, 
see it just it'll just lay back down because you've already folded it and it's much less bulk the bulk is you know put over two parts of the of the seam instead of right at the front so then we're going to grab our quilt and we're going to put this binding on i like to start in the middle on the side and i'm going to leave um i'm going to put the raw edges to the raw edges and i'm going to leave about a i don't know eight to ten inch tail here and I'm just gonna start right here and I'm gonna sew it around. So let's go back over to the sewing machine. So I've got my binding on here and I just, um, I line up my presser foot with, with the edge of the, of the uh, quilt and we're just gonna sew it on here. Now, if you're sewing this, <laughs> I've got this like right in my face. If you're sewing this, um, and you're gonna hand bind it. You sew it to the front of the quilt and curve it around to the back. If you're going to machine bind it, you sew it on the back and curve it around to the front. I prefer hand binding, so we're going to, we're just gonna go ahead and sew this to the front. And I'm just gonna zoom along here like this. Today I brought my, this is my baby lock Jane, and I love the Jane because it's so fast. It's just a straight stitch, but uh, it's great for that quick sewing, so I brought that up to the table. Now when I get to the end, this is something I really want to show you. I go a quarter, I stop one quarter of an inch from the end, approximately, you know, I mean I don't do it straight. I'm going to turn it and I'm just going to sew off the edge to the point. So you get, a little, you get a little V like this right here, and you just come off the edge. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just pull this back like this and lay it straight across. So I'm going to come right over here to the overhead camera so you can see this really well. So I've sewn right off the end. So I sew down to the edge, right off the end, and then we're just going to curve this back like this. When you sew off the end like that, it just, it just makes it lay so nice. So then we're just gonna, we're just gonna put our finger in here, curve it back like that, and we're just gonna come right in here on this edge and start down the next side. So I'm almost to the last corner here. And we'll show that again. And as I zoom down this side, I go a little slower when I get close to the end because I just am, I'm eyeballing that quarter of an inch again. I'm going to turn it, sew right off the edge. Then, again, we're just going to fold it back. Make sure it's even across the top. There it is right there. And then sew down that side. And we're almost right back where we started. Okay, so we're almost right back where we started and this is, this is the, the big important part that I want to show you. So, when you're going to finish your binding, I mean this is just, I, actually a lady came to our guild and showed me how to do this and it was like the lights went off, the bells, the whistles, I mean it was awesome. So however wide you cut your binding, now I always cut mine two and a half, but that's personal preference and people can change and, you know, I mean, some people do it two and a quarter, I mean, it's just all different ways. But mine is always two and a half because I, I like that extra room when I pull it around, I like to be able to, you know, have a little bit of extra room. I don't want to have to pull it tight. Um, but um, what, here's what she told me, and this is just, when I found this out, I was just so glad. First of all, you want to make sure you cut off your salvage, and I'm just going to cut, I mean your selvage. <laughs> I know that's how you're supposed to say it. I always get in trouble for saying it. Salvage. Anyway, so however wide your binding is, mine is two and a half, you're going to overlap your strips two and a half. So mine is overlapped two and a half, and you can get a little ruler and measure it, and you'll want to do that. Uh, for a long time. I am just, I can lay mine on here and I can see that this right here is two and a half and I'm just going to clip it. Now I've been doing this a long time so I can clip it without my little ruler but if you want to bring a little ruler in and make sure that how, however, um, however wide your binding is, you're overlapping that much. So my binding is two and a half, I'm going to overlap it two and a half inches and I'm going to clip it here. 
just like that. It takes a little bravery to clip it right there. So then what you do is you're just going to sew it together exactly how you sewed your strips when you were putting them together in a little plus sign. So we're going to lay them together like this. I like to leave a little bit sticking out there and we're going to bring it over to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew diagonally corner to corner. It's exactly the same how you do it. The key is however wide your binding is that's how far you overlap them. Then you go ahead and give it a cut. So we'll go over here to the sewing machine and I'm just going to lay mine on here and sew corner to corner and mine again mine sticks up a little bit above um, a little bit above the strip and I see a little bit of the strip coming out of the side. So I'm going to put my presser foot down and sometimes I'll, I'll stitch two or three stitches and then I just make sure it's laid flat because it wants to get a little bunchy in here a little bit. And then before you cut it off I check it. So let's check it and see how I did. So I check it to make sure it's going to lay nice and flat right along the edge of my quilt. And this one came out perfect. Yay! Sometimes that doesn't happen when you're doing it in front of the camera. So then again, I'm going to come over here and show you so you can catch this on the, on the camera. It's good. So then I'm just going to trim this off right here because I know it fits. I don't trim until I lay it out, stretch it out like this and make sure it fits. Then we're just going to come along here and sew it down and it's just flat. Nobody knows where you started or ended and the mystery of the binding has been finished. We have completely fixed that. And I just stitch over the top and the binding is on with the sewing machine. So now all that's left to do is pull that around to the back because you sewed it on with the sewing machine right here, this gives you a guide to put your binding on. And all you're going to do now is you're going to stitch it down by hand. So let me go get a needle and thread and I'll meet you right back here. So when you sew down your binding on the top, you want to match your thread to the color of the binding. Not the backing, but to the color of the binding. And so I have a little, a bit of green thread here and it's just a shade different so hopefully you'll be able to see it. And I use my needle threader because, golly, I know there's a hole in that needle. I've been threading it for years, but I can't hardly see it anymore. <laughs> and I love the needle threader. So with this one, it's fun because you just, you put your needle in the end, you lay it across there, you push the button, and it just threads it for you. So when I do a knot, let me show you how I do my knot here because sometimes people get confused by that. There's, there's two ways that I like to do it. This way first is um, I just hold my thread with my finger, uh, with my thumb across my finger so it makes an X. Then I just roll it off and then pull it down like that. So that's the easiest way really to do a knot. And when I, um, I'm going to start here so I can show you a corner. When I, and, and this is something else you have to do with your binding. You have to um, figure out how it's easiest for you to hold it. So I'm going to just come in here like this and I, I bring my needle in here and I come out the fold just like this. And so my, my knot is going to be hidden on the back and then I fold this down. I use my stitch line as the guide and right where I've come out there with, uh, with my thread I'm going to go ahead and put my needle and just slide it under the edge of the material and make sure it doesn't come through to the front and just come back out. So right now wherever I come out I'm going straight down in and I slide it across like this and that little stitch I mean that's really how you hem pants, it's how you attach applique, I mean it's great for all kinds of things. So again we're you know I actually don't ever go straight down like this I just put my needle right where it came out and just slide along under the edge of that fabric. So we'll just go along here. I used to bind every quilt that came through Missouri Star Quilt Company. Now I have two binding fairies that do it for me. It just got to be too much for me and boy I had to, those women are way better binders than I am and I thought I was pretty good. So I go between an, um, an eighth and a quarter of an inch, um, you know, somewhere in between those two and it just, 
I mean, it just lays down so nice and is so pretty. All right, so I got a few more stitches here and I'm going to get to the corner. This is something that's really hard to get in a book. So now I'm coming out of this um, corner right here and I'm just going to take another stitch just to kind of lock that in place. Then you can see my binding is, you know, it's kind of folded over here. So I'm just going to fold that straight down until it makes a nice even miter like that. So you can see that fold is right there and I'm just going to tack the bottom of this. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches right in that fold and then I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to come up through the fold and go down the other side. And then I just hold it. Now there are all kinds of things out there. Um, people, there's those cool little clips to hold it down. There's um, those little, uh, you know, squeezy things, you know, the little, what are those called? Clamps, <laughs> the squeezy things. But I just do it with my hands. And then some people bind, you know, with the fabric going this way, you know, they sew along this way. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to go the other direction, but you just have to get comfortable with it. If it feels odd to you, you're probably, you probably just need to turn it and it'll feel normal because this sewing along should feel normal to you. So just move your quilt around until it gets in a normal spot. And then we're just going to keep binding this and go all the way around this whole quilt. And I mean, it's just as easy as that. So we hope you enjoyed this binding tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.